the colors are a little different, but you can technically get depth of field from this. Let me show you what happens when you do. I'm gonna relabel this layer to depth of field using depth. And this is going to be depth of field using mist. So let me turn on the background. We'll go back to Frisch Luff so you can kind of see the errors that happen. And we're going to get it from mist. Now let me select the center again. And what you're going to notice are these nasty artifacts that you can get on the edges if you use a mist pass. Let me take a screenshot of that. This is mist and this is depth. Let's focus in right here so you can see this. Mist pass, see these edges and all this aliasing and issues? Depth pass. Mist path, depth path, mist path, okay, you get it. And just if you ever run into this with your compositor renders, let me explain to you what's happening. A mist pass, you can see how smooth it is, has anti-aliasing on it, whereas a depth pass has no aliasing. And in this case, these depth of field plugins love passes that are not anti-alias, so jaggedy. And it's just able to read this information better versus the mist pass that is more smooth. It causes artifacts and those issues that you see in depth of field. The same thing will also happen with the camera lens blur plugin from After Effects. You're going to have issues using the mist path versus depth. And if you're using a different program or if you're finding issues with your depth of field, the first thing you want to look at is you want to make sure your depth is not anti-alias. You want footage that is not anti-alias and it normally comes out anti-alias. 